Alan Grayson joins us. Uh, Congressman, uh, great to have you on the program. Thank you. You know, I, I think I would have been disappointed if you told everybody that I was going to be on the show and I didn't show up. I would have felt bad. <laughs> yes, that's true. So, uh, Congressman, I understand you're in the middle of a, a tough re-election battle there. So, uh, give us an update. Well, what's the latest? Well, it's hard to believe, but I am, according to Politico newspaper in Washington, D.C., the number one target of these right-wing special interest groups running negative ads all around the country against Democrats. Politico said last Friday that they've spent $9 million against the Democrats. These are, you know, front groups for the insurance companies, the oil companies, Wall Street, and so on. They've spent a total of $9 million across the country, and that includes $1.7 million against yours truly. Almost 20% of the entire national total has been spent against me with these vicious, evil, negative ads that they run against me. Literally, I'm not exaggerating. They call me a liar. They call me a national embarrassment. They call me a loudmouth. You know, loudmouth, maybe. But <laughs> the, the, they're just relentless. The average person in Orlando, in my district, has seen these ads 70 times in the past six weeks. Jesus. It's absolutely unbelievable. You know, we say to ourselves, we are number one. We are number one in negative advertising against us in the entire country. And, you know, think about it. I'm a freshman Democrat. I'm not on the Ways and Means Committee. I'm not on the Appropriations Committee. I'm not a member of the leadership of the Democratic Party. And they devote 20% of their national firepower just to get rid of me. What an honor. Well, Congressman, there's something uh, funny about that and interesting about it because, you know, they also say, oh, you're a kook and a loon and it's and so outside the mainstream. Set. But if you were and if you were that marginal, why would they care so much? Well, here's what it's really all about. You know, they try to buy you and I wouldn't go for it. And if they try to buy you and they fail, the only thing left is to destroy you. And that's exactly what they're trying to do. This is plan B for them. Uh, uh, Congressman Grayson, you, you mentioned the, uh, the, the, the $1.7 million spent so that most people in your district have seen, they've seen the ad 70 times, is that what you said? That's right, and Politico went through all the other races. They found only six races in the entire country where these groups had spent at least $400,000, and in our race they spent $1.7 that's, uh, that's remarkable. But I, I, then I, I, we, we got to ask you then, because you, you took some grief even from the, from the Daily Show then for, for one of your ads uh, where you referred to your opponent as Taliban Dan. Did that, first of all, why run that ad, and was it the ads against you that thought, well, I'm coming back over the top then? No, I mean, the average person in Orlando saw our ad twice and saw the other side of the ad 70 times, so I think uh, it's pretty clear uh, what would be having the impact. But just to explain to your audience, who most of whom, you know, virtually all of whom have not seen the ad, what we did was we pointed out the analogy between my opponent's views about women uh, and the views of other radical extremists like the Taliban. For instance, uh, my opponent has said that if a woman is raped, she has to bear the attacker's child. Uh, my opponent has also said that if you are the victim of incest, you must bear your attacker's child. My opponent has also said and actually wrote and introduced a bill that would prevent abused women from getting divorces. My opponent also has introduced a bill that would prevent unfaithful wives but not unfaithful husbands from getting alimony. And on and on and on and on. Uh, you know, basically, he believes and is willing to enforce laws that make women second-class citizens. Where else is that true? Well, uh, I, look, I make the connection between the Christian right and the Muslim right all the time, so uh, I get it. Now, the, the clip seemed out of context, to be honest with you, the one that was in the ad, okay? But, but the, the substance of your charges... Uh, I think are accurate. Also, so. real quick, let me just th throw in that the notion of that that when I saw it and I was critical uh, of your ad too. But then, in the context of of seeing so many Democrats back away and be afraid, in the sense of yeah, you know what, I'm getting hammered, I'm hammering back. A abstractly, I totally admire that. Yeah, no, the first time we ran the ad, I said I love it that somebody's finally attacking. <laughs> uh, so, how are you doing that? How are you raising money to fight back against this? Well, uh, we have people power. Uh, over 80, we've received over 80,000 contributions, uh, and our website, congresswithguts.com, brings in more contributions every day. Um, and we need them because we need that money 
to fight back. The difference, of course, is that these special interests that are trying to end my career um, and destroy uh, my effectiveness uh, because of vilifying me with these ridiculous ads of theirs, they want something specific. For instance, the largest single ad buy so far has been by 60 plus, which is a front for the insurance companies. Why do they want to get rid of me? Because I introduced the Medicare You Can Buy Into Act. So all of these companies have their own agendas. The oil companies have their agendas. Wall Street has their agenda. Uh, I'm the Financial Services Committee. You can well imagine what Wall Street's agenda is. The insurance companies have their agenda. But on our side, the people who give $25, $50, our average contribution is a little more than 30 all of those people have only one thing in mind, which is they want somebody who will speak for them, and somebody who's willing to speak out, and somebody who can not only take a punch but throw one occasionally. And, and for the people at home, 60-plus uh, is a group that existed before but actually did not have great funding. After Citizens United, and they're the right-wing version of AARP, right? After Citizens, they claim, at least. After well, Citizens no, I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, it's pretty clear. I, I, you can find this, this much out just by going to Wikipedia. They have no members. <laughs> um, they, you know, it's interesting because AARP uh, has so many members that people have suggested that AARP change its name from the Asser American Association of Retired Persons to the American Association of Persons. <laughs> That's how many members AARP has. And in their public filings, this group 60-plus put down for membership dues zero. Mm -hmm. So they are entirely funded by special interest groups, and it's pretty obvious who that is. It's, they're funded by the, the insurance companies. Right, the, the and health after, insurance companies in particular. And after Citizens United, they got a flood of money, millions upon millions of dollars with their zero members, and it was to make sure that they went after people like Congressman Grayson and others who fought for real health care reform and fought for the public option and fought for real choice, uh, which, of course, they didn't want. This is what's part of sick about our, uh, our politics. We have reached the point now where these special interests think that they can elect a ham sandwich to Congress. That's where we are right now. It is completely irrelevant who is running against me as far as they're concerned. I could be opposed by an axe murderer, by a, by a child molester. They don't care. They absolutely don't care. They simply want to get rid of me because I won't play their game. Now, one other aspect of this, Congressman, uh, I know that you're collecting money from all across the country in small amounts to fight back against these special interests. But there's also people making calls for you and volunteering for you from all across the country. You know, How that's is that one happening? of the most exciting things. The, the PCCC, the PCCC, has set up this phone banking system uh, that people can participate in. And last Sunday alone, uh, we got 16,000 calls into the district, into key voters, uh, targeted voters, who need to hear from other people that we need Alan Grayson in Congress. So it's extremely exciting that this is happening. They're shooting for 20,000 calls this uh, Sunday, and I'm thinking that they're going to reach it. So, right. The PCCC and Democracy for America, and, and now uh, the Young Turks as well, we're doing TurkOutTheVote.com. And what you do is, if you want and you're progressive and you believe it, you make calls for these congressmen you know, that are real progressives. So on Sunday, it happens to be Congressman Grayson, and it rotates. And they have a goal of getting 500,000 overall, 20,000 from Congressman Grayson. And how is that different, Congressman Grayson, than when it, what it used to be in the past? I mean, somebody had a hell of a lot harder time helping you in Florida if they were in Minnesota before. How has this kind of changed the game? Well, we have what's called distributed uh, call centers and distributed phone banking. Uh, you, you go to a website, um, you uh, log into the website, uh, you get a list of telephone numbers that you can call. Uh, you go ahead and you call those numbers with a script that's prepared for you. They suggest to you what to say. Obviously, you use your own words. But if you're wondering what the heck could I possibly say about Alan Grayson that would be positive, they'll tell you. Um, and then you go ahead and you report on the results of your calls. And as I said before, on last Sunday alone, the Progressive Change Campaign Committee actually generated that many calls, 16,000 calls, along with uh, your, you and other allies into our district, which is a phenomenal number of calls. We're only going to have about 200,000 votes. Uh, so what, what the, you've had the possibility that over the course of several weekends, you could reach everybody who is actually likely to vote. And that's the kind of campaign that, that we've been running, too, a people power campaign. In 2008, we actually knocked on 400,000 doors. And we had 600,000 live phone calls in 2008. And we have a district with only 500,000 total registered voters in it. And in that year, we had barely 300,000 of them vote. This is 
more persuasive than anything else that you could possibly do. In fact, uh, less than two weeks before the 2008 election, the DCCC, uh, the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, sent out uh, an, uh, an email to all of the other competitive races in the country referring to our field work and saying, why can't you be more like Grayson in Florida 8? And the DNC, when Howard Dean was in charge of it, actually did a scientific study in order to judge what is the most persuasive means of having voters change their minds or support uh, the position that you're trying to espouse. So they tried robocalls, and they tried mail, and they tried TV ads and everything else in a controlled environment, a scientific environment. What they found was that calls from other people were four times more effective than anything else. And here we have the perfect case of big money versus the people. So if enough people call and they reach everybody in your district, we might actually be able to beat them. Uh, real quick, uh, Congressman Grayson, if, if all that is true, I'm, uh, obviously it is, if you can get sort of these people so revved up for this and, 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 and it's, this process can work for raising money, why is there so much less enthusiasm for Democratic candidates uh, this cycle than for Republican candidates? Well, um, it, it's not necessarily true in my case, uh, but if you're talking about the national scene, it goes back to something that I said a year ago. In fact, I said this on national TV. Um, I said we cannot allow people to go into the 2010 election recognizing how utterly discredited the National Republican Party is, how utterly useless that is, how, how much they are tools of the special interests and how much they have these crazy ideas that nobody can understand, much less agree with. But we can't go into this 2010 election where people think that the choice is between the crazies on the one hand and the lazies on the other. We have to actually accomplish good things for people. And I think that the fact that the Republicans were able to stop substantial parts of the president's agenda in the Senate through the filibuster, uh, and I'm not talking about health care, that got through, I'm not talking about the recovery plan, that got through, but many other important things like, for instance, the Employee Free Choice Act, that m major elements of the Democratic coalition wanted to see passed. Another one I can give you an example of is immigration. Major elements of the Democratic coalition wanted to see these bills passed, and they were utterly frustrated by the Republicans, the 41 naysayers in the Senate, who were able to block large parts of the president's program. So we are approaching that point where many people think that the other side is crazy, but maybe the Democrats are lazy, and what they want most of all is somebody who's simply going to help to solve their problems. Congressman, do you think the president made a mistake by continually reaching out for two years in an effort that proved futile uh, to the Republicans and squandered the opportunity to actually fight for your agenda in those two years? I don't have any doubt about that at this point. I think it was clear in the, I think it was clear before he was sworn in that the Republicans were bitter enders. They were already attacking him on election night. And they kept attacking him in the most personal ways possible, saying that he wasn't uh, born in the United States, where's his birth certificate, that he's uh, a Muslim, which is an ironic thing to say about an elected official since the Constitution specifically says, specifically says that there shall not be a religious test for any office in the United States. I mean, you couldn't possibly be clear on that subject, and still they hammer him for being a Muslim or whatever they thought he was, uh, and, a, and a socialist and a, and a fascist and a communist and all these other things, a Marxist. Uh, and they, they didn't let up even for a moment. They never gave him a chance. So this, this idea that he had that maybe he could reach across the aisle, which he tried to do in all sorts of ways, including the fact that he included a Republican in his own cabinet, the Secretary of Transportation, in a, a thousand different ways. It was clear a long time ago it wasn't going to work because it takes two to tango. Right. And by the way, he also tried to get the Secretary of Commerce to be Senator Judd Gregg, who then later went back into the Senate and voted against every single thing yeah. that Obama proposed. So That's how right. good an idea was that? So, Congress Grace, finally, what's the status of the race? How are you doing? Uh, are you going to be able to pull this thing out? I know you're going to say you're, you, you, you're going to, but how is it right now? It's close. It's really, really close. Uh, we're talking about within the margin of error, and we can't tell which way. Um, we need everybody's help. Um, if you can uh, volunteer and do these, this phone banking effort uh, in the way that we just described, or at our website, callforgrayson.com, which you can reach 24 hours a day, please do. I mean, we, we need the help. Also, if anybody 
still ha- if any Democrat still has any cash left in his pockets, and God knows that's a smaller and smaller number every day. If you have any cash left in your pockets and you can contribute to us at, at congressmanwithguts.com, then please do it. Uh, the 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 as time goes on, what we're finding, and this is really sort of strange, is that we're being pushed out of the media market by these special interests coming out from in from outside, and not only uh, airing these disgusting ads, but actually buying up all the time. You know, we're reaching the point now where it's very difficult to actually find TV time at any price, and the prices that you find are literally six times as much as what they were two months ago. So in order for us to maintain our voice, to keep talking to people in the electorate through, through that means, through TV, through radio, uh, and so on, we, we need to have the contribution. So if people can help us at congresswithguts.com, your money will be wisely invested. Uh, right. But it's, you know, at least I, I have the consolation of knowing uh, that I'm, I, I'm certainly drawing fire <laughs> um, and, you know, possibly even saving some other seats. I, you know, I, 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 I didn't expect that my role in this race would be the sacrificial lamb, and we're <laughs> certainly fighting to prevent that from happening. But uh, I thought I would be the decoy, actually. <laughs> but I didn't realize that they were using live ammunition to shoot at me. Wow. Um, well, so, uh, yeah, we do need people's help in every conceivable way, and uh, I think we can pull it through. Um, like I said, it's, it's really, really close at this point. And, you know, I'm, I'm in a tough district. We won by four. Uh, the Democrats now nationwide are down 16 points from where they were on Election Day in 2008. So, logically, we should lose by 12. <laughs> I don't see that happening. That's not what the polling indicates. Um, and I think that if good people with a conscience pull together, we can get this done. All right. Congressman Alan Grayson, thank you so much for joining us on The Young Turks. Thank you, too. Thank you very much.